in celebration of Kingdom Hearts 3 that's coming out on Tuesday, and kind of because it's been a really big thing for me, I'm doing a recording of the Ansem Report, a very special video game story time. If you guys have been following on Twitch, you'll see that I've played the games through along with all of you. So if you haven't followed me on twitch.tv slash mrcreepypasta, check me out and I'll be playing through Kingdom Hearts 3 once it releases. And a quick warning, the Anthem reports do have quite a bit of spoilers uh, for Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, and kind of the entirety of the series. It reveals quite a bit about Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, Ansem the Wise, Xehanort, and the origins of Organization 13. Enjoy. Report 1 Much of my life has been dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. That knowledge has guarded this world well. Not a soul doubts that I am blessed with my people's smiles and respect, but though I am called a sage, there are things I do not understand. I believe darkness sleeps in every heart no matter how pure. Given the chance, the smallest drop can spread and swallow the heart. I witnessed it many times. Darkness. Darkness of the heart. How is it born? How does it come to affect us? As a ruler of this world, I must find the answers. I must find them before the world is lost to those taken by darkness. Report 2. It is my duty to expose what this darkness really is. I shall conduct the following experiments. Extract the darkness from a person's heart. Cultivate darkness in a pure heart. Both suppress and amplify the darkness within. The experiments caused the test subject's heart to collapse, including those of the most stalwart. How fragile our hearts are. My treatment produced no signs of recovery. I can find those who had completely lost their hearts beneath the castle. Sometime later, I went below and was greeted by the strangest sight. Creatures that seemed born of darkness. What are they? Are they truly sentient beings? Could they be the shadows of those who lost their hearts in my experiment? Report 3. The shadows that crawl beneath the castle. Are they the people who lost their hearts? Or incarnations of darkness? Or something entirely beyond my imagination? All my knowledge has proved no answer. One thing I am sure of is that they are entirely devoid of emotion. Perhaps further study will unlock the mysteries of the heart. Fortunately, there is no shortage of test subjects. They are multiplying underground even as I write this report. They still need a name. Those who lack hearts. I'll call them the Heartless. Report 4. The Heartless appear in groups and are multiplying rapidly. I've provided them both living and non-living samples. They've responded only to the living. They seem to multiply after absorbing something from the living creatures. Their prey vanishes without a trace. I believe the heartless are taking hearts. They are born from those who've lost their hearts and thrive on hearts seized from others. The hearts taken by the heartless become heartless themselves. Though I lack proof, I am confident in this hypothesis. I must also study their behavior principles, though. They lack emotions. They do seem to have some intelligence. How to communicate with them. It's just occurred to me. Could they be the darkness in people's hearts? Report 5. To study the heartless behavior, I picked one out of the observation. It wiggled its antennae and, as if sensing a target, headed deep into the castle. 
In the deepest part of the castle, its antennae began vibrating as if searching for something. Something. And suddenly a strange door appeared. I'd never known of its existence. It had a large keyhole, but didn't seem to be locked. So I opened the door. What I saw on the other side mystified me. What was that powerful mass of energy? That night I observed a great meteor shower in the sky. Could it be related to the door that I had opened? Report 6 A massive core of energy lay beyond the door sought by the Heartless. It may be the ultimate goal of the Heartless, but what is that energy? I have devised a hypothesis based upon my observations of the Heartless. The Heartless feed on others' hearts, and they yearn for that energy core. That thing beyond the door must be a heart, too. The heart of this world. There's no proof. But having felt that immense energy, I am certain. That was the heart of the world. The Heartless are trying to take hearts, not only from all living creatures, but from the planet itself. But what do they mean to do with the heart of the world? Report 7 I'm studying materials from the meteors that ran down that fateful night. What a find. The material is foreign to our world, it's elastic to the touch, and when two pieces are combined, they bond easily. None of the records even mention such a substance. Was it introduced to this world when I opened the door? I wonder how many other such materials drifted through the atmosphere of this tiny world. I wish I could soar off and find it. Could there be uncharted worlds up there? My curiosity never ceases to grow. But I should stop speaking of such unrealistic dreams. For now, there is no way to venture outside this world. My people and I are all but prisoners of this tiny place. Report 8 There is no doubt that the Heartless are deeply connected to the people's hearts, for their study may unravel both their motivations and the mysteries shrouding the heart. As a start, I have built a device that artificially creates Heartless. By recreating the conditions that spawn the Heartless naturally, I should be able to produce them artificially. This device is the culmination of all of my research thus far. The machine's tests run successfully and created a Heartless. This may be a step towards creating a heart from nothing. The artificially and naturally created Heartless showed nearly identical traits, but the two types remain distinct for the purpose of the experiment. So I'll mark the ones that are created artificially. Report 9 Simply astonishing. Today I had a guest from another world. He's a king and his vessel is built of the material that composed the meteors. He calls the pieces gummy blocks. It seemed that my opening the door has opened a path to interworld's travel. We talked for countless hours, but one story in particular caught my interest. That of a key called the Keyblade. The Keyblade is said to hold phenomenal power. The legend says its wielder saved the world, while another says that he wrought chaos and ruin upon it. I must know what this key blade is. A key opens doors. It must be connected to the door I've opened. Report 10 Just as the people have hearts, so do worlds. The same can be said of stars in the night sky, and deep within each world lies a door to its heart. The heartless desire those hearts. Born out of darkness in people's hearts, they seek to return to a greater heart. Yes, that's it. The heartless come from people's hearts, as does the darkness. In the core of the world's heart, the world of the heartless. I'll pursue the answer there and become all-knowing. My path is set. I shall seek out the wielder of the Keyblade and the princesses. 
My body is too frail for such a journey, but I must do this. I will cast it off and plunge into the depths of darkness. Report 11 In opening the door that stores the world's heart, the wall around the world is broken down. We see this as a shooting star. Through this, I've been able to understand the reason why the material known as gummy blocks has the ability to allow travel to other worlds. The cause of a world's wall collapsing is the appearance of the heartless. But finding a world's door takes time, and robbing a world of its heart is a similar case. If the door has been closed by the key known as the Keyblade, you probably cannot reach the world's heart again. Before the one with the Keyblade appears in this world, I must take measures to do something. Supposing that there is a close relationship between the princesses and the Keyblade, it seems likely that they will resonate with each other. I have chosen one special girl. I don't know if she possesses a power like that of the princesses, but there is a chance. This is an experiment. She may lead me to the place where the ones holding the key is. I shall send her off to the ocean of other worlds. Report 12 I have transcended to an existence of only the heart. I have come back as a heartless. But there is no sign of such a transformation. My body has surely perished. However, I am different from the other heartless. Keeping the memories of before and I have not taken on the form of a heartless. It is clear. There are still many things to be studied. In order to cross over to the dark side which is not this world. You must go beyond the door of Kingdom Hearts, the place connected to the world's heart, the innermost part connected to the world's heart, the place connecting the world of darkness. I will record the details in another report. There are still so many unknown worlds. The present world, the world of darkness, the world of light, and the world in between. Where does the true paradise lie, I wonder? Report 13 When the heart casts off the flesh, where does the body go? Heart and soul are separate, and the spirit remains in the body. But can we assume that the leftover body and soul perish? Certainly. When the heart changes into a heartless, the body disappears. However, there is only this world's story. In another world, mightn't they change forms like the heartless and exist there? If we take that to be the case, there must be a you other than yourself existing somewhere. An existence neither of darkness nor of light. An in-between existence. Cast off by the heart, a mere shell. One who degrudges both the darkness and the light. This mystery cannot be easily resolved. The relationship between the heart and the flesh is a complex one. But since we exist here, they cannot be turned as existent. Therefore, I shall call them the non-existent ones. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you all thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, or watching tonight's story if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, that means you're probably on the podcast that's available on iTunes, on the Google Play Store, and is now actually available on Spotify, and doesn't use as much data. So, hey, that's a thing. If you guys aren't listening on YouTube or Spotify, then I have no idea how else you could have found me. Unless you found one of those books on Amazon. You know, the Creepypasta Collection Volume 1, Volume 2. Those are things too. Oh well, I don't know how you would have heard me there, seeing as this was recorded like two years after those came out. Uh, well, 
Anyway, thanks for listening, folks. And sweet dreams.